You are welcome to A Light for the Nation, your daily devotional program brought to you by the Catholic Church. My name is Tony Abba. Today we are looking at the topic, A Call to Leadership. To guide us in today's reflection, we have Reverend Father George Barde. Dear viewer, dear child of God, today's reflection is titled, Call to Leadership. Before we begin, let us begin with a word of prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, you have called us to follow your Son, to follow his leadership. You have called us also to be leaders. Give us grace, because you have said without you we can do nothing. And with St. Paul, we believe that with you, who strengthens us, we can do all things. Grant us your Holy Spirit so that we can replicate your goodness. We can replicate your leadership. We can replicate your power. We can be salt and light to the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall read from the Gospel according to Mark. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Evidently, the leadership status of Jesus needed to be reaffirmed by God the Father himself, as Jesus began his earthly ministry, the voice from heaven affirming him as the beloved and well-pleasing son of the Father to be listened to is that decisive affirmation. The idea of a calling, especially for those not engaged in some sort of professional ministry, is often seen as a cake or old school, as we say it here, impractical and strange, even by Christians. This view is damaging both to God's kingdom, its spirituality and economy, and to individual lives and careers. Christians in particular must understand that God has a call on our entire lives, including our careers and businesses. To see this any differently not only denies but betrays our allegiance to God as our creator, as well as an understanding of the supreme price Jesus paid for us on the cross. It keeps us from living fully integrated lives in which all things work in synergy for our good, for the building of God's kingdom. This calls us to perfect discipleship. In an ever-increasing secular age, where many churches have accepted sinful practices as sound doctrine, where consumerism has planted its seed, and where more than half of Christians in Nigeria have either read little or none of the Bible, it seems our understanding of following Jesus is becoming more dear and more dear. So let us discover our true essence of being the disciples of Jesus. The call to discipleship is defined all throughout the Bible, but one of the most prominent places is found in Luke chapter 14 where Jesus defines his disciple as someone who has abandoned and surrendered to him, someone who has an individual heart that is wholly dedicated to loving him. The, Lord calls, the Lord's call to discipleship is a call to leave the world behind and to follow Jesus, and that is what makes us leaders. The mark of a true believer is summed up in surrender to Christ, and this, is, this manifests itself in many different ways in the disciples' life. Discipleship is a radical surrender and obedience to God in this crazy world, which leads to fulfilling roads. This discipleship, again, is an intimate form of mentorship whereby students don't merely go to a classroom to learn. Instead, they did life with their teacher watching the example that he sets forth in both his action and his words. And this is what it means to be a leader, that we are mentors 
mentors to the world. And that is why Jesus calls us salt and light. This form of mentorship is the very model that Jesus demonstrated when he entered the scene in the New Testament. This is why it was not peculiar for Peter and Andrew or any of the other disciples to drop what they were doing to follow him. They recognized Jesus as a leader, as a teacher, and understood that they were giving up what they had for something better. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 14 verse 25, the Bible says that large crowds followed Jesus. And so Jesus turned to them and spoke, explaining what it means to be his disciple. He was showing the people that he was not merely a teacher, but the actual Messiah who has come to save. And to follow him was not a question of putting one foot at home, one with the teacher. It was a total surrender. So he says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, even his own life, that such a person cannot be his own disciple. And again, anyone who wants to be my disciple must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. God has specific plans for each of us and we must do our very best to determine what they are and not only submit to them but to actively participate in achieving them with total commitment. It is the failure to do this that often leads to less than God's very best for us. Sometimes great abilities or giftedness in one area of life does not translate to great abilities or giftedness in all areas of life. So also inability in one area of life's endeavor does not translate to uselessness in all areas of life endeavor. This means that we are always leaders in one way or the other, in one area or the other. For example, a great teacher may not necessarily be a great administrator, No, a great administrator necessarily be a great teacher. As we discern our very calling and purpose of God for our life, it is good to seek advice and direction, especially spiritual direction. But ultimately, this calling to be leaders is always between you and your God. Sometimes it happens that our parents and even friends might mean well for us by making plans for us, helping us sort out issues and learn new opportunities and even try to railroad or teleguide us. But we should realize that even though they might mean well for us, it does not translate to the call of, to the call of God for our life. We must have the presence of mind with the help of God's grace to find the path God has planned for us. This can be attained through a closer relationship with God and prayer. Also through listening to our interior minds and strengths with the help of experienced spiritual directors and mentors. Never let anyone else determine God's will for your life, no matter how important they are. Even though God can use our parents and superiors to help us discern His will, we cannot substitute ourselves and God in this whole affair of God's call on our life. No one else can understand God's unique call on your life as clearly as yourself. Eli only helped Samuel to understand that God is speaking, but the details of that speech was between God and Samuel. Many of us love to patronize prophets and men of God to choose for us spouses, career, etc. It is wrong for us to think that they can substitute our place in the plan of God for us, or to think that God cannot deal with us directly when it comes to such matters. This is not in any way to say seeking advice and direction is bad, but we should not substitute our very great standing before God as He leads us in our lives. May the Lord bless His words in our hearts. Amen. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our Father, every day we depend on You for strength, for wisdom, for abilities. Bless us with wisdom, bless us with courage, bless us with abilities, so that what you have called us to be, we will have the courage to become, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May the grace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you now and forever. Amen.
Reverend Father George Barde is of the Catholic Archdiocese of Joss, guiding us in today's reflection. But if you have questions or suggestions you wish to share with us, please send us a short message on the numbers rolling on your screen, or send us an email at ctvnigeria at yahoo.com. Or better still, you can post us a comment on our Facebook page. Let us interact and hear from you. We would love to hear from you and pursue the tenets of good leadership. Bye for now and have a great day ahead.